según el grupo de índices tiene que ver con el endeudamiento, el endeudamiento que tiene una empresa, la capacidad de endeudamiento que tiene una empresa para hacer frente con sus pasivos. <risa> Research has shown that not all students learn effectively in the classroom under what is sometimes called normal conditions. This can be caused by a plethora of different factors. This video has been designed to help teachers and even pre-service teachers more effectively reach their students. This short video will take you through the logistics of this teaching and learning method by addressing the fundamental concepts and details. We're going to show you the basics, like which student group this style is most effective for, when it could be implemented, how you would implement it, and we shall also show you some brief examples to get you thinking about how you will use this concept in your classroom. Research has shown that students only retain approximately 30% of information if they receive it through generic sources such as lectures, videos, and quizzes. So keep it interesting and fun. According to Bloom 2009, this form of immersive learning has been shown to dramatically improve student information cognition when compared to traditional learning and teaching styles. According to Royal 2008, active participation of students and an entertaining environment is key to the success of this teaching and learning style. The cogs presented here represent the process in which students actively learn in game-based teaching. In traditional teaching and learning styles, this middle cog is often missed out and some students struggle to bridge the gap between content and cognition. The question is, some students have issues with learning just straight theory from chalk and talk, but why is this? As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I take a look at my life and realize there's nothing left, cause I've been blasting. How can we help? What is the problem that needs this sort of intervention? But I ain't never crossed a man that didn't deserve it. Me be treated like a punk, you know that's unheard of. You better watch how you're talking and where you're walking. Or you and your homies might be lying in chalk. I really hate the How can we change this? They can learn with a variety of resources and tools to succeed. Can game-based interventions help make that change? Never underestimate your problem or your ability to deal with it. Create that environment. Look at the situation they got me facing. I can't live a normal life. I was raised by the state. So I gotta be damn with the hood team. Too much television. Game based learning should not be incorporated in the classroom too frequently. In order for this form of learning to be most effective, it must be used judiciously. Using this teaching style too frequently for all parts of the curriculum would become too repetitive for the students and they would not fully benefit from the activity. In order for students to cognize effectively and to not get distracted during their lesson, game-based learning will effectively reach students when used appropriately to engage them with the curriculum on a weekly basis. But how can it be utilized effectively? Providing students with a game that reinforces the curriculum enables them to interact with their peers in order to develop a better understanding of what is being taught. Game-based learning as an experiential learning method involves a direct encounter with the curriculum, enabling students to actively become involved. This sort of direct interaction with the use of a game can be linked to Kolb's experiential learning theory. After you consider when this learning and teaching style should be used, you need to consider what can be used. Any type of game can be used provided it incorporates the curriculum and relates back to what the lesson is about. Students can physically play a game with each other or it can be ICT based, like a video game. To best delineate this concept, we've invited Scott Adamson, an expert in the field of game-based learning, to share with us a game-based learning tool. Farmtasia is one example of a game-based constructivist pedagogical approach. In 2008, Cheung et al. performed a comprehensive review on this game, focusing on issues such as engagement, relevance and educational value. This virtual reality online game primarily focuses on key learnings in economics and technology. However, subjects such as biology and business management also have some relevance. The beauty of this sort of teaching style is the fact that students are able to and willing to do this within their own time. 
making the idea of homework actually enjoyable. In Farmtasia, each student acts as a manager of a farm, working with and against other students within the class. The main conception of the game is to formulate different investment and operational strategies in order to make the most money. Having the most money is also by no means the sole judging criterion as sustainability, reputation and environmentally friendly practices can also help to define the overall winner. Teachers are also immersed within this virtual reality. The teacher console records every single action taken by the students. Together, with the help of a playback function, teachers are able to provide constructive feedback to students. Another useful tool is the ability to add artificial catastrophes to the in-game environment. This tool is useful when assessing students' ability to deal with emergencies and crisis. While doing their comprehensive survey on Farmtasia, Chiang et al. found that all students were at least satisfied with this pedagogical approach, with no negative feedback observed. It's then relevant to say that immersive experiences such as this seemingly add interest and challenge to a curriculum and are extremely useful in identifying the schemas of individual children whilst at the same time creating a useful ICT learning device. Thanks Scott. Hopefully you all now have an understanding of this new, innovative and exciting approach to teaching and learning. Now we would like to leave you with some extra resources for you to consider to complement those we have already presented throughout the video. All resources discussed in this short presentation are presented in the credits. The 2010 Horizon Report is a good place to start if you want some further details beyond this video. If you're looking for a more interactive representation of similar ideas and themes, perhaps the 2009 game-based learning website would more suit you. Another good website to consider is markprensky.com. This site is quite useful as it effectively delineates this learning and teaching style while showing some examples that would get you thinking about how you can use game-based learning in your classroom. Finally, we will leave you with one more example of a game-based learning tool you could use in your numeracy or mathematics classroom. Mathletics is an online, numeracy-based game that allows students to compete against other students of equiability in answering a series of maths questions. This allows students to learn through friendly competition. Hopefully you have learned enough about game-based learning to be able to incorporate this innovative approach in your classroom. All of the resources presented here should assist you if you have any further queries or concerns.